5 30 p.m. here on Wednesday, April 19, 2023. I'd like to call to order tonight's regular Board of Education meeting. Do we have a roll call, please, Tammy? Kendra Osnes? Here. Jacqueline Gremler? Here. Maria Volpe? Here. Brett Waller? Linda Yingling? Here. Paul Prue? Here. Chad Krieger? Here. Ron Liberty? Here. Kevin Blake? Here. <coughs> Next on our agenda is listed as the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to ask everyone to do things a little bit differently this evening. Momentarily, when we stand for the pledge, I ask that we all join together in a moment of silence and remembrance of Aiden Griefe and Dakota Brown, the two Merrill High School students that recently passed away. After completion of the moment of silence, I will lead us in the pledge. So please stand as you're able and join me in that moment of silence. Thank you. And now face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Merrill Area Public Schools Board of Education meeting. MAPS respects the role that our elected board members serve in the function of our board meetings. Board members and administrators are committed to working collaboratively to provide our students the highest level of achievement. This meeting is a formal event and professional conduct is the expectation for all in attendance. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Okay. Next on our agenda is the opportunity for public comment to the board. I did not receive any slips. Tammy, did you? All right. Moving on, we'll move on to board recognition. Tonight, the board would like to recognize uh, George Wilde. When we asked uh, Principal Heather Soberg for some insight on George, she, she shared that I uh, wanted to thank George for the exceptional efforts he's made in going above and beyond in his role as a school custodian, his hard work and dedication to keeping the school clean and safe. It's truly appreciated. George's attention to detail and willingness to go the extra mile has not gone unnoticed. Whether it's dressing up as a lead server for the students' fancy lunch, performing in skits to help reteach expected behaviors, helping out with dishes in the kitchen, or quickly addressing any maintenance concerns, his commitment to making our school a welcoming and com comfortable environment for students and staff is truly remarkable. George's positive attitude and friendly demeanor is a joy to be around and he has a positive impact on everyone who comes into contact with him. His willingness to help others is a testament to his character and professionalism. On behalf of the entire Kate family and our school board of education, I'd like to express the gratitude for your outstanding work. Thank you for <coughs> exceptional dedication and for going above and beyond in your role as a custodian. You truly embody the spirit of excellence we are proud to have you as part of our MAPS team. agenda is the recognition of the out, of an outgoing board member and welcoming of the new. So tonight, as we mentioned with the recent spring election, you know, on the agenda, we want to say thank you to Maria. While I was thinking and preparing for this, there's many things that I could say about <laughs> Maria. <laughs> and I'm sure we can kind of go around the room, but I'd like to just be nice and summarize things and just say thank you, not only for your hard work, your dedication, your willingness to speak your mind <laughs> and bringing your ever smiling and, and joyful, not to mention trusted sidekick and friend of the board, our honorary board member, Sophia. <laughs> so before the three of us gather for a picture, yourself, Sophia and I, 
Shannon had a quick story to add that we kind of reminisce from the start of your superintendency, right? Yeah, not about Maria, though. No. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> no, no. <laughs> so I wasn't here the, the evening I was uh, approved for hire. I was at the Honor, National Honor Society induction. But I was told that after a motion was made and seconded, they took a vote for eyes, and Sophia from the back voted aye. <laughs> so, and I think she was the swing vote. <laughs> so, would like a picture with me. meeting we will welcome uh, welcome back Norbert or Nubs Ashbeck so on April 24th we will bring him back on board and we will go from there uh, at this time we will go to the student board of education representative reports Isaiah and Brooke are here whichever one would like to lead us off I'll do it this week All right. <laughs> Um, it is with a heavy heart that our first report is one of sadness and heartbreak. This past weekend, Merrill High School experienced a tragedy, the loss of Dakota Brown and Aiden Griffey. Although, although there is not much that I can personally say on this topic, it is of high importance that each person take the time to educate themselves on the situation currently being faced by our community. With that being said, I, as well of, as all of the students and staff at MHS, would like to give a big thank you to Mr. Murray and Mrs. Baker for making themselves available for those struggling. Although with the support of Mr. Murray and Mrs. Baker, there were 10 additional people with varying backgrounds brought in to help support our student body as well as members of our staff. Along with those wonderful people, a therapy dog was brought on site as another form of comfort for those who needed it. Due to all of this, the decision has been made to reschedule the pre-ACT to a later date that has not been made official. I know that I know that was a lot, but it is important to us at Merrill High School that everyone is equipped with the resources they need to be able to heal and progress through this difficult time. The National Honor Society will be holding an induction banquet on May 1st. This is a very exciting event for those having the honor to be brought into such a great club. Our school started April off strong with prom being April 1st. This was a beautiful night for all of those able to attend and participate. With prom, as you know, there was the crowning of the 2023 King and Queen. This year's prom king and queen was Bobby Hoff and Brooke Brudai. Merrill <laughs> 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 uh, High School's presentation of Fiddler on the Roof will be this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The cast has been practicing diligently for months to memorize their lines, dances, and songs. They're excited for the opportunity to get on stage in front of an audience and show their talent. The SkillsUSA State Competition is coming up at the beginning of May. 
This competition will be happening in Madison and is a great chance for students to show off their unique skills in the form of a state competition. Maddie Crossman also broke a school record and a personal record for the 200 meter at indoor conference last week for track. She won first place in the conference and also broke her previous personal record by 0.6 seconds. She is very happy to be putting her name up on the Merrill High School record board and hopes to break more records as the season goes on. All right. Thank you, Brooke. Isaiah, any board members have any questions for our student board reps? Thank you for the updates and congratulations, Brooke. Thank you. <laughs> Next on our agenda this evening is administrative reports. Just as a reminder, uh, board members have asked some questions, and if you want to ask any additional ones uh, on the uh, on the record and for clarification or for your own knowledge, now would be the time to do so. I'll, I'll turn this section of our agenda over to Superintendent Murray. Shannon. Thanks. Uh, first on the agenda for this part of the uh, agenda is uh, the Director of Curriculum Instruction Report. Can't, um, Glenda is here this evening. Her report was on Systems Implementation Review and Staff Perception Survey. Are there any questions for Glenda this evening? Seeing none, uh, next MP is the Pine River School for Young Learners monthly report. Um, Mr. Martinovich is here. Uh, his report covers a variety of topics as they relate to Pine River School. Any questions or comments for Mr. Martinovich? The Food Service Participation Report has been provided by Laura uh, Zastro. She's not here tonight. Um, and next is the Director of Special Education Pupil Services Report. Focus on Narcan availability at MAPS, and Karen Baker is here this evening if there's any questions for her. The Buildings, Grounds, and Transportation Update provided by Dale Bergman is provided uh, as an attachment here. Dale is not here this evening, um, so if there were any questions, I would give it my best shot or forward those on to Did I miss uh, HR finance one? No, I did not. And then last is the superintendent's report. There are two things that I'd like to highlight there. Um, first, we have, I have shared with you the, uh, the key communicators group that we are starting. That group has met uh, with the first core group of about 15 um, people participating or joining that, that core group. Uh, the goal now is to expand that out. We're shooting for about 100 people to be involved in that group. And so as by way of reminder, key communicators group is um, people that are interested in being knowledgeable with accurate information from the district that are willing to share that in the circles that they want. And so that's, that, that's off to a good start and that uh, uh, I think we got the right people on board and I look forward to that going. Uh, the other thing is we, I reached out to uh, officials from the county and the city of Merrill and we had our first meeting as administrators to kind of just sit down and talk about community issues. Uh, we talked about education, of course, uh, affordable housing, child care, um, budgets, uh, as you might expect. And uh, so we're going to continue that meeting monthly and try to uh, look at things from a holistic viewpoint. So that, that was very positive. I had uh, Renee Krieger from the county, uh, Don Frisky, Kevin will be joining me next time, uh, Steve Haas, the mayor, and um, Corey Bennett as an interim administrator. So that was very productive. So we'll meet again in May, and that was, uh, that was a kind of a nice start to that. So any questions or comments on that? So I think it's communication that needs to be done we are one family here, and the best way to keep everybody involved is those kinds of things. Yeah, it was interesting how the issues that we talk about impact all of us, whether it's you know, uh, child care or housing or education, you know, getting, uh, workforce development, all those things. So it was, it was really time well spent. All right. Thank you, Shannon. Next on our agenda, we will start with the committee reports. We'll start with any questions for our policy committee attached for the draft minutes from the March 13th <coughs> committee meeting. Paul Prue is chair and additional policy committee members are available for questions. Any questions for our policy committee this evening? Hearing none. Certainly, thank you. There was a lot of work done on all committees, but that one was certainly a lengthy meeting as well. Um, next is the Finance Human Resources Committee. Draft minutes were provided from the April 12th, 
committee meeting. Uh, any questions for our finance HR committee? I have a couple questions for the um, substitute teacher pay. Okay, go ahead, Linda. So, um, as far as I know, you guys said we weren't going to be making any changes, um, and that we do have a shortage of subs, um, and that seems to be all over the place. Um, but are we still utilizing the student teachers as well? We have, uh, I believe it's one currently. One, and and what rate, and is that treated like a sub teacher or how does that work? Mm -hmm. So I think what you were referring to is a long, like we have hired long-term subs basically to be a full-time sub. Okay. That's what you're referring to, which we did four last year. We offered one this year for the remainder of the year for student teachers. So when they come, they come on site, they're going to be sub here every day so versus the call-in sub. They get a rate that's a little bit higher than sub, but less than long-term, unless they fulfill a long-term sub, they would get a long-term rate like anyone. So those folks are available to us district-wide, so the assignment may change, but they're available to us every day. So they're set to where there's need. Yeah. Well, I got, I mean, to me, I guess the student teacher is different than a substitute, I suppose. You know, because they're still learning, they're still going to school, correct? No, these would be some student teachers teacher. who've completed student teaching okay. and have not found employment. So then it's kind of like a. Uh, so they are a long term, like we okay. hire them for the semester basically because sometimes it's hard for student teachers to find employment in the middle of the year. So we've hired last year, we did the same, and this year we did one as well. So they, they're done student teaching there now, officially being a teacher, and then we hired them just to be long term sub. Basically, they're sub every day. <laughs> no, so like, I mean, I understand like you made a comment about the retired teachers coming in to sub and there's a, an issue with... They're limited in the number of hours they can work for retirement okay. purposes, yeah. No, I mean, if we were to maybe the sub pay do the same as the student teacher pay, would you think you would be able to acquire more of the subs to come in and help us out if it was equal? Well, there, I guess the one thing is they're not a student teacher. It's a, it's like hiring a, we chose to like basically hire an everyday sub. So they're, they're under a, they have a half term contract with us. So we've done that with the student teachers for the semester in a short term, not a long term situation. Mm -hmm. I would tell you that our rate when we looked at, we pay the highest actually in the area. There's a couple districts that are getting closer to us with our rate. I'm just curious if, you know, maybe that was upon is. I don't know if this is the right word, a slap in the face to some of our people that would love to come and sub but are not are getting treated differently than a student teacher sub kind of thing. You know? So or I think the difference is being on call, like the subs are available, they can pick jobs as they want versus when we hire for the semester, they have to report every day and we okay. put them like it's a commitment to an everyday commitment. Okay. Which we can't offer that type of employment to retirees. Okay. Because of the limit of hours. And are a majority of our subs retirees? Or? Mm, I don't know that I'd say a majority. We got, uh, yes, probably some of our regular guests. Okay. And then the reason for the retirees because they're getting the benefit that would be. They're limited to the hours. number of hours they can work and they collect on retirement. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Linda. Any additional questions for our finance? Human Resources Committee. Chad? I had one on the coaches and whatever pay. Um, the way I understand it, they're going to stay at the rate they are this year for next year? Yeah, Is so that that's correct? actually an agenda item coming up. Okay. Yeah. If you're okay with that, we'll All right, that's fine. Any additional questions for Finance Human Resources Committee? Next, then we have our Curriculum Technology Pupil Services Committee, or CTP Committee, attached with the draft minutes from the April 12th committee meeting. Maria Volpe is chair, and other members of the CTP Committee are available for questions. Do you have any questions for our CTP Committee members this evening? Mm -hmm. Questions for our CTP committee members. All right. Hearing none.
on next on our agenda is unfinished business. We do not have anything categorized as that, so we'll go right to Board of Education business. Our first topic this evening is approval of the federal <coughs> COLA supplement and quality improvement funds. Attached was the topic summary sheet from Ryan Martinovich with a recommended motion. Do we have a motion this evening? Paul? I move to approve the 2023-2024 Head Start Federal COLA Supplement and Quality Improvement Funds. Motion by Paul. I'll second. Second by Ron. Do we have any discussion or questions on this topic or this motion? Any questions or discussion on the topic or motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is modifications of the 2023-24 MAPS school calendar. Attached was a topic summary sheet from Shannon Murray and a recommended motion from the CTP committee. Do we have a motion this evening? Maria? I move to approve the modifications of the 2023-2024 MAP school calendar to best meet the needs of the student, staff, and community. <coughs> Motion by Maria. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Paul. Any discussion or questions on this topic or motion this evening? Any discussion or questions on the motion or this topic? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is the 2023 Summer School Academy Program Course Description Book. The topic summary sheet was co-authored by Heather Carr and Brad Potter with a recommended motion from our CTP committee. Do we have a motion this evening? Ron? Make a motion to approve the schedules, course offerings, and registration materials for MAPS Summer School Enrichment 2023. Motion by Ron. Do we have a second? Second by Kendra. Any discussion or question on the motion or this topic? Any discussion or questions on the motion or this topic? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Do we have any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is the elementary student handbook for 2023-2024. Topic summary sheet was co-authored and submitted by uh, Principal Amy Stetstream and Principal Heather Sober and a recommended motion from our CTP committee. Do we have a motion this evening? Kendra? I recommend the approval of the 2023 to 2024 elementary student handbook. Motion by Kendra. Do we have a second? Second by Maria. Do we have any discussion or questions on the motion or this topic this evening? Any discussion or questions on the motion or topic this evening? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Do you have any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is the approval of the Washington DC and New York City trip for 2024. Attached was a topic summary sheet from Principal Diane Gage and staff members Jolene Wikes and Hazley Bennell with a recommended motion from our CTP committee. Do we have a motion this evening? Kendra? I recommend a motion to approve the 8th grade Washington DC New York City trip for June of 2024. Motion by Kendra. I'll second. A second. Second by Ron. Any discussion or questions on this motion or topic? Any discussion or questions on this motion or topic? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. <coughs> Next item on our agenda is the <coughs> of the 
content filter for a security internet safety filter solution attached was a topic summary sheet provided by Andrew Kaler with the recommended motion from our CTP committee. Do we have a motion this evening? Paul? I move to, move to approve the security replacement content filter in the amount of $51,480 for internet filing service through internet filtering service, I'm sorry, through the 2025-2026 school year with costs coming out of the 22 and 23 IT budget. We have a motion by Paul. We have a second. Second by Maria. Do we have any discussion or questions on the motion or this topic? <coughs> any discussion or questions on this motion or topic? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Do we have any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is a printer purchase for the graphics department. Topic summary sheet was provided by Dr. Kelly Strike and recommended motion from our Finance Human Resources Committee. We have a motion this evening. Ron? We have a motion to approve the purchase of a printer for the graphics department from Up and Running Solutions. Motion by Ron. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Paul. Do we have any? Questions or discussion on this motion or topic? Chad? Is there a price associated with that? So we shouldn't just, otherwise we're kind of open up a blank check. Go ahead, Kelly. Yep. Um, in the budget fiscal impact, you'll see the value is 18995 but after a discount and a trade-in of an old printer, the actual cost that would be paid is $9,995. It's coming out of three different um, Sources, Carl Perkins, the District Tech Ed budget, and then the Student Blue Jay Designs Activity Count. It'll be a joint effort. Can that be a friendly motion to add, to, to add that to it? To the motion? Amendment. Are, are we all right with that, or do you want a formal amendment? Should amend it properly. Okay, we could like uh, an amendment to add the nine the fiscal impact of the yeah. of the breakdown of the eighteen thousand nine yep. ninety five <coughs> half in trade in and the rest and the approximately nine thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars from Carl Perkins, three thousand tech ed budget, approximately eighteen eighty nine twenty three in the Blue Jay Design Activities account approximately fifty one oh five seventy seven. Chad's motioning for that amendment. Do we have a second? Okay. Second by Maria. Any questions on on the amendment? Hearing none, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Say nay. <coughs> Any abstentions? We need a, and we will go to the amendment motion. All those, anyone have any questions on the amended motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is raise your voice advisor pay. That topic summary sheet was provided by Shannon Murray with a recommended motion from our Finance Human Resources Committee. Do we have a motion this evening? Paul? Jack, what did you want? Okay, uh, Finance HR Committee. I move to approve the Raise Your Voice Advisor pay three positions at 1,000 each for the 2022 2023 school year. Motion by Paul. Do we have a second? Second by Jacqueline. Any questions or discussion on the motion or this topic? Any questions or discussion on the motion or topic? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. 
Next item on our agenda is a first reading for staff handbooks for 2023-2024. Topic summary was provided by Dr. Kelly Streck. Anyone have any question, this question or information? This was discussed at committee level, but this was no action tonight being a first reading, but if anyone had any questions, discussion or insight, we could have that right now. Thank you. We will bring that to the next meeting as a second reading. Next on the agenda, agenda is benefit renewals. Attached uh, topic summary sheet was uh, about the benefit renewal summary. We'll start with the long-term disability or LTD and short-term disability. Those topic summary sheets were provided by Dr. Kelly Strike with recommended motions from our Finance Human Resources Committee. Anyone like to make a motion beginning with long term and short term disability? Maria? I move to approve the renewal contract with the standard for long term disability and short term disability insurance for the upcoming year contract with a second year rate cap as presented. We have a motion by Maria. Do we have a second? A second. Second by Ron. Do we have any discussion on that motion or this topic? discussion or questions on the motion or topic hearing none all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. anyone opposed say nay any abstentions Kendra? next on our agenda is voluntary benefits attached was another topic summary sheet from dr. strike recommended motion from our finance human resources committee Do we have a motion this evening Maria? I move to approve the renewal of both the Dental's Vision Plan and the Guardian's various offerings as voluntary benefits for fiscal year 24 as presented. Motion by Maria. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Paul. Do we have any questions or discussion on this motion or topic? Any questions or discussion on the motion or topic? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Kendra abstains. Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is the Delta or Dental and Vision Insurance. Topic summary by Dr. Strike. Recommended motion, Finance Human Resources Committee. Do we have a motion this evening? Ron? Make a motion to approve the renewal of the dental insurance with no change to deductible rates and vision insurance at 0% increase with Delta Dental for fiscal year 24. Motion by Ron. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Paul. Any discussion or questions on the motion or this topic? Discussion or questions on the motion or topic? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Kendra abstains. Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is health insurance. Attached to the topic summary sheet from Dr. Strike. Recommended motion from the Finance Human Resources Committee. Anyone willing to make a motion on this topic? Paul? Move to approve the renewal of the health insurance with the Spires Health Plan with a 1.9% increase as presented for fiscal year 24. Motion by Paul. Do we have a second? A second. Second by Maria. Any discussion or questions on the motion or this topic? Any discussion or questions on the motion or topic? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Kendra abstains. The motion carries. Next on our agenda this evening is the Athletic Coaches 
compensation plan. The topic summary sheet was provided by Dr. Strike. A recommended motion from our Finance Human Resources Committee. Anyone willing to make a motion this evening on this topic? Paul? Move to approve the Athletic Coaches Compensation Plan for the 2023-2024 as presented. Motion by Paul. Do we have a second? Second by Ron. Do you have any discussion or questions on this topic? Chad? Yeah, just to be clear that the way I read it, there won't be any increase in pay for coaches next year. That's correct. So our, uh, our, our um, coaches' salaries or wages are based on a percentage of the base wage. A month or two ago when we did uh, budget reductions, we voted to move people through the scale, but we did change the base wage. So yes, the coaches pay its rules, essentially. Thank you. <coughs> Any additional questions on the motion or the topic? I do. Go ahead. Maybe I've been told this before, but I can't remember. Who, who divvies out the pay for each of the coaches? Does the head coach decide what the assistance coaches get? It follows the schedule that's presented. It does matter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> once upon a time, it was different. Oh. Um, <coughs> seven years ago, we went to this model. I thought uh, so, yeah. but. All right, thank you. And I think, so let's say that there would be a deviation and someone wanted to split a position. So if you wanted to be a half-time coach or get paid half and I wanted to get paid half, that could go through a process and, and be approved, but otherwise it sticks to that schedule, correct? Yep. Cool. All right, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Go ahead, Chad. Seeing that pay was based, what happens if you're not a MAPS employee? How do you figure it out then? Same thing. It's based on that 41. The number, the number's on the, you know, the top of that chart, 41727. So if you're not an employee, it's still based on oh, that teacher. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. I got you now. Yep. The purpose of bringing this is really twofold, if I can speak for Kelly. One is that we haven't done this a long time, and we wanted it, it should be brought from the board every annually. And secondly is the change in the way So we had a hard time, it was a percentage of the whatever. Um, so we switched it to an hourly so that maybe we could have multiple people do it and not split it up in the fashion that, that Kevin was describing. And we reduced five coaching positions, remember? So that's reflected yeah, in this as well. Like from yeah. the number of coaches and the number of assistants, that's been reduced. So I made notes on there of where those reductions were done. So that reflects the last time. Any additional discussion or questions while we have Kelly at the table? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Say nay. Any abstentions? The motion carries. Next item on our agenda is the Youth Apprenticeship Positions for 2023-2024. That topic summary sheet was from Dr. Streck and the recommended motion from the Finance Human Resources Committee. Do we have a motion this evening on this topic? Ron? I make a motion to approve the new slash revised youth apprenticeship positions as presented. Motion by Ron. Do we have a second? A second. Second by Chad. Any discussion or questions on the motion or this topic? Any questions or discussion on the motion or topic? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. I know this is after the it just happened. Where does the grant come from? Like, where do we apply? It, yeah, through? so it's a, through the Department of Workforce Development. That, and okay. so we get an allotment per student from the DWD that's a, that completes youth apprenticeship. So it's okay. a rolling grant. And, um, and the, the, the number varies slightly every year per student, but it's very really steady. Do they cap it? No. Okay, so it can be as many. Students that wanted to per district. Yes, except for it's gotten more rigorous over the years, so it, it, 
we can't have 200 students in it because there's expectations of employers and the student and sure. hours and criteria that have to be checked off through the process. So it's mm -hmm. pretty rigorous. I think we're probably, for a school our size, right near that point. Okay. And the dollars, like the students get like for themselves or whatever, for school, whatever, mm -hmm. is through the grant. Yeah. Always. Yeah. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Good questions. Thank you, Jacqueline. Next item on our agenda is the first reading of policy 5250 programs or curriculum modifications. This is a new policy. Our policy committee does have a recommended motion. Do we have a motion this evening? Paul? I move to, <coughs> excuse me, I move to approve to align with state statute. Oh, I'm sorry, my cold has got me going. A motion to approve policy 5250 programs or curriculum modifications as a first reading. A motion by Paul. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Chad. Do we have any questions or discussion on the motion or this topic or this particular new policy? I do this on the first reading. How can we motion this first reading and not the other first reading for the handbook? The other one we did first reading. The yeah, but we didn't make a motion for it. No, oh, that's good. This is no action at this time. No. And policy with a I'm not sure. I'll turn to Tammy on this one. Normally on a policy, you do have a motion twice. <laughs> the handbook oh. was told we weren't. So yeah, help, for, help me out. For um, new policies, it comes to the board as a first reading because it's the first time that you're seeing it collectively and you're approving it. Um, if it's a policy that we've had before and there's just revisions to it, it can get away with just a second policy. I'm guessing the handbook is just a first glance through, but it's not Tradi policy per se. Yeah, yeah, traditionally they've done a first and yeah. second, I think yeah. just because of yeah. the content. They yeah, just wanted the opportunity to view it. Yeah. And so I think Chad's question is why, it wasn't, why do we get one on it? Yeah. I just, yeah, it, just, it just seemed weird that we did one and not the other one. Right. I don't mean to be difficult. No. <laughs> I just seem odd that we assume that one first reading and all. It's a good question. I even at committee said normally you've typically done a first and second read just because of the the content of it. Yeah. So I think it's just a first and second read. Yeah. 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 Yeah
that have not been adopted through normal rulemaking procedure. Um, and the superintendent shall inform the board of any such changes at the next regular board meeting as part of the regular review process of policies at the March 8th Finance Human Resources Committee. Uh, policy 9800 was noted need a technical correction and that's being brought in front of us tonight. It's the consistency of changing the words Board of Education to Board as an example. So this is that awareness piece of bringing it to the board. Next on our agenda is the Aspirus Merrill Hospital donation for curriculum implementation. There was an attached cover memo from Karen Baker as well as a donation form due to the fact that the donation is <coughs> over 2500 the limit set in policy 7230. This donation comes to the board separately for an approval. There is a recommended motion from our CTP committee. Do we have a motion this evening? Maria? <coughs> Excuse me. Move to approve the donation of funds from the Aspirus Mural Hospital valued at $6,500 for SEL committee review of curriculum, participate in conduct trainings, review appropriate lessons for each grade level to personalize lessons for students, and communicate with building level staff about implementation of the curriculum. Motion by Maria. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Kendra. <laughs> Any discussion or <coughs> on this motion or this topic? Any discussion or question on the motion or topic? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is the personnel <coughs> report. It covers hirings, recruitments, resignations, retirements. The attached personnel report was provided by Dr. Kelly Strike with a recommended motion. We have a motion this evening. Paul? We move to a, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I, mo I move to approve the attached personnel report contingent upon the satisfaction the appropriate liquid liquidated damages for resignations if applicable. Motion by Paul. Do we have a second? Second by Maria. Do we have any discussion or questions on the motion or this topic? Jim. I see that some of these are externally posted. I thought we were internally posted everything first for the last meeting. On on the layoffs and the reductions that we did reductions this uh the director of people services is a pretty specific um, licensure and skill set so we are doing internally and externally now okay i am um, the other two were internal first without applicants and one extra nobody applies for the 10 months secretary job um we did internal and then go external if we can't find so in some cases we had no applicants or after we go through the process that we find maybe we don't have an applicant that aligns with the job description to go external, but we always go internal first. The pupil service one did go directly external. Everything else went internal first with <coughs> some. But we, we notified the internal yes. staff that it's posted and we encourage our mm -hmm. internal candidates to apply for that one. All staff are in there. Okay. So the 10 month went internally and then nobody applied or qualified for it? Mm -hmm. Our twin internal, no applicants, went external, so I think that's on there, it's external as well. It, which one was it? Art. Okay. And then Spanish, you'll see there's a transfer there, which ultimately resulted in uh, uh, opening up Spanish, but we have no other Spanish candidates. So then after the, the transfer, the <coughs> what was left went external. Actually, we have one other <laughs> internal candidate who said they're not interested, so we went external just to see. Right. Okay, thank you. Before you go back into the audience, just in case you have any extra, any extra uh, discussion or question, Maria. Just a quick question, just to kind of piggyback off what Chad said. So, if if internal candidates meet all the criteria, they are given an interview. Yes. Okay. They just have to meet, but everybody is that meets the criteria. Yeah. We have that. That has applied. Yeah. Right. right. And I don't, if, if we ever get a situation where we have 
I will say, like, if we have 50 people apply, we might not do that. Do you know what I mean? But that hasn't been the case, right? Like, we might screen internal if we had, like, several apply, but thus far we have certainly done the yeah. okay. I'll let her get to her seat before I ask her more <laughs> questions. <laughs> uh, any additional questions or discussions on this motion or topic? Really hoping we had one to get our steps. But no. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. Where we ask for that motion. Does anyone want anything pulled out of consent agenda to be acted upon separately? Since there's a lot in there to, to review, I'll, I'll ask again, does anyone want anything pulled from consent agenda to be acted upon separately? Otherwise, I'll ask for a motion on the consent agenda, please. Do my last one. Would you please? Yeah, that would be no fitting. No problem. This <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> Motion to approve consent agenda items A through D, which includes second readings and approval of revisions to bylaw 0100 definitions, bylaw 0175 association, association memberships, policy 2210 curriculum development, policies 3215, 4215 use of tobacco and nicotine by professional support staff, policy 5200 attendance, policy 5330 administration of medication emergency care, Policy 5340, student accidents, illness, concussion, and sudden cardiac arrest. Policy 5410, promotion, placement, and retention. Policy 5512, use of tobacco and nicotine by students. Policy 5517, student anti-harassment. Policy 5771, search, search, search and seizure. Policy 7434, use of tobacco and nicotine on school premises. Policy 7440, Facility Security. Policy 8405, Environmental Health and Safety Program. Policy 8420.01, Epidemics and Pandemics. Policy 8600, Transportation. And Policy 8800, Religious Activities and Observances. Minutes of the March 15, 2023, March 29, 2023, March 30, 2023, and April 12, 2023 meetings. Claims, vouchers, and receipts totaling three million eight hundred seventy-two thousand five hundred sixty-one dollars and sixty-five cents, and donations totaling nine thousand eighty-nine dollars. We have a motion by Maria. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Kendra. All those in favor of that motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Say nay. I will call for abstentions at this time. Ron. Abstain from the March 15th, March 29th, and March 30th minutes <coughs> meetings. All meeting right, minutes. any additional abstentions? I yeah. abstain from the April 12th minutes. I'm going to abstain from March 15th and April 12th. Maria? I will abstain from March 15th, please. All right, Jacqueline? And I will abstain from April 12th. All right, thank you. Motion carries with the noted abstentions. Next on our agenda is items for future meetings. As you know, the purpose of this agenda item is to identify any of the topics that we want to keep front of mind or perhaps have come to light either in our community or as work, as we thought of some of the work we've done on committees. Um, does anyone have any items for future meetings that they would like to mention this evening? Linda? Yeah, I do, and I'm hoping we can get in on the organizational meeting, um, and that's to possibly look into the virtual option for board members um, in case emergencies or medical necessities that we're able to be here virtually because of certain um, circumstances.
any questions on that? Kendra, you got that captured in there? Mm -hmm. Tammy? Okay. Any additional items for future meetings? Jeff? Shannon, I guess that one with the coordinating events, that should be a good one for a new little group that you got made with coordinating events with the city. Yeah, calling. I will um, come to a full concession uh, confession. We have a homecoming conflict already involved. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that that's what that's about. I would talk with Dan. And, mm -hmm. uh, but yes, for the moving after fall, because that would, the schedule was already set athletic wise. So. Any additional items for future meetings? <coughs> All right. Thank you. If you have additional topics for a regular board meeting or special board meeting, contact Mr. Murray or myself. If it's for committee meetings, we will we can certainly contact committee chairs accordingly. I'm sorry. I Go ahead. Just to remind I won't be on the board, but um, we have talked about this at one point in time, and I'm not sure where it went, and maybe you can remember, getting junior achievement back in the schools. I don't know where that went in. Um, and so maybe, maybe it just goes on a future, or I don't mean to put you yeah, on the spot right now. I don't, I don't know if that has to even come to the board, junior uh -huh. achievement. We, we lost our advisor, uh -huh. and we just haven't been able to find an interested advisor. Okay. And then, uh, I'm not sure about the community side of that. There's a community rep as well. So we, we can certainly have that discussion. I think mean, that needs to be going to the board. Sure, it's yes. just before I leave, yeah. I'm just dumping sure. all the thoughts. Okay, thank you. I think it is a good point to bring it up this time of year versus wondering where it's at the start of next year in right. September and say, oh, we don't have one more now. We could be actively recruiting somebody, hopefully. At least to have it in front of mind. I think that's a volunteer position. I'd be happy to. Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> she said, very afraid. God, I'm really turning back. That's something to put on like CTP, just to, I mean, so it stays fresh. So it, it's already in our program. You know, we're just like, yeah, but I mean, just so that it, just a special note maybe to bring up there, just so that, just that it's fresh in here. Yeah. Everybody might, even though it doesn't have to come here. Right. That would be good just to keep it in. I think we have it somewhere. <laughs> and just even a refresher at that mm -hmm. committee level as to if there is a, a staff member and a community member, if that's a partnership around that, how that works. Any other additional topics or items for future meetings? Otherwise, next on the agenda is a reminder of the radio program schedule for tomorrow morning, 8.15 a.m. on Blue Jay Radio. Will be on there unless Vice President Volpe would like to speak to me. Oh no. No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I think. Um, future meetings. The safety committee meeting is going to be held next on Monday, April 24th, 12 30 p.m. here in the boardroom. There's a special board meeting and organizational meeting also Monday, April 24th, 5 30 p.m. in the boardroom. Facilities Committee meeting is Wednesday, May 3rd, 3.30 p.m. in the boardroom. Bridges Virtual Academy Governance Board next meets on Thursday, May 4th, 12.45. They meet virtually. Special board meeting on Thursday, May 4th, 5.30 p.m. in the boardroom. We have Head Start Policy Council is Tuesday, May 9th, 5.30 p.m. Pine River School for Young Learners. Our Finance Human Resources Committee next meets on Wednesday, May 10th, 3.30 p.m. in the boardroom. Please note that time change, 3.30 p.m. for Finance HR, followed by CTP or Curriculum Technology Pupil Services on that same evening, May 10th, 4.30 p.m. in the boardroom. Our <coughs> School Force <coughs> Advisory Committee next meets on Monday, May 15th. 4 p.m. out at the School Forest. Our next regular board meeting for the month of May will be held Wednesday, May 17th, 5.30 p.m. here in the boardroom. Next on our agenda <coughs> is a <coughs> contemplated motion for closed session. There is no need at this time to go into closed session, so I will not ask for that motion. I will ask for a motion 
to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Maria. We have a second. Second by Chad. All those in favor of adjourning at 6.30 p.m. signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all for your participation this evening.